Mr. Pollock, you're recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, Ranking Member Moore, and members of the subcommittee. The proposals under consideration today are all parts of a timely and fundamental review of America's central bank. From James Madison, who wanted to protect the new United States from a rage for paper money, as he said, to now, money has always been and is an inherently political issue involving questions not amenable to technocratic solutions, but requiring judgments about the general welfare. For example, Congress instructed the Federal Reserve in statute to pursue, quote, stable prices, unquote. But the Federal Reserve decided on its own that the term stable prices means perpetual inflation uh, at the rate of 2% a year. This reasonably could be viewed as a contradiction in terms, but certainly raises the question, who should have the power to make such judgments? The Fed by itself, or the Congress having heard from the Fed and others? Under the Fed's current fiat money regime, we have experienced the great inflation of the 1970s, the financial crises of the 1980s, the bubbles and crises of the 1990s and 2000s, and the radical asset price inflation of the 2010s, the outcome of which is as yet unknown. Since the economic and financial future is unknowable, the Fed is incapable of knowing what the results of its own actions will be. How should the Fed be accountable for its various judgments, guesses, and gambles, and to whom? And at the same time, how should it be accountable for how it spends the taxpayers money and how it makes decisions. I believe there are four general categories for this discussion. One, the accountability of the Federal Reserve. Two, the checks and balances appropriate to the Fed. Three, the centralized versus federal elements in the Fed's own structure. And four, dealing with, un with uncertainty. Uh, on accountability, the power to define and manage money is granted by the Constitution to Congress. There can be no doubt that the Federal Reserve is a creature of and accountable to the Congress, just as Norbert said. Uh, and the Congress, of course, uh, represent the people for whom the nature and potential abuse of their money is always a fundamental issue. The primary central bank independence problem, in my view, is independence from the executive. The executive naturally wants its programs, and especially its wars, financed by the central bank as needed, and a lot of history demonstrates this, and some of it's in my, in my written testimony. I think it's important to realize that the Federal Reserve Reform Act of 1977 and the Humphrey Hawkins Act of 1978 were attempts under Democratic Party leadership to make the Fed more accountable to Congress, just as we're talking about today. This was the right idea, but I think it's fair to say these attempts were not successful. The most fundamental power of the legislature is the power of the purse, and Congress can use this essential power for Fed accountability. Every dollar of Fed expense is taxpayer money and would go to the Treasury's general fund if not spent by the Fed on itself. Since it is taxpayer money, the proposal to subject the Fed to appropriations, in my view, makes sense. Checks and balances are essential to our constitutional government and, and to every part of it, including the Federal Reserve. Since the Fed has amassed huge regulatory power, the Congress should require additional reporting regarding the Fed's regulatory plans and rules, especially in its new role as the dominant regulator of systemic risk. The original Federal Reserve Act of 1933 tried to, uh, I'm sorry, of 1913 tried to balance regional and central power, hence the name Federal Reserve System, not Bank of the United States. This theory lost out in 1935, but in my view, adjustment back to a more dispersed power within the Fed would make sense, and three of the draft bills under consideration move in this direction and are, in my opinion, all appropriate reforms, as are anything which increases the intellectual diversification uh, of Federal Reserve operations, and a number of the bills do that. In sum, the Federal Reserve needs to be accountable to the Congress, to be subject to appropriate checks and balances, be understood in the context of inherent financial and economic uncertainty, 
and would benefit from rebalancing of centralized versus federal elements in its internal structures. Thank you for the opportunity to share these views.